What's up people, you're watching Cartel TV and I'm Cold and I'm Jenny. Last year, we reviewed the 2018 Mazda 6, a completely redesigned version of the Mazda 6, which brought loads of improvements to the already popular car. Just a year later in 2019, Mazda decided to improve further with a few spicy additions. The 2018 Mazda 6 was pretty impressive and definitely current. So unless they've done something pretty whack to this year's, we expect a positive review. They say there are improvements that will set the 2019 model apart from the 2018 one, even if they do share most of the features. So let's see if Mazda's talking sales smack or not. Last year, Simone reviewed the 2018 sedan in the GT. This year, I've got the 2019 wagon in the touring trim. So that's the second from the bottom trim, which means that I don't have heated seats. It's freezing today, so it's not a great start, Mazda. On the outside, a keen eye will notice the top two trim levels primarily due to the wheels. But other than that, there isn't much that separates the trims or the 2018 model from this one. So this means that the 2019 Mazda 6 in the touring trim is a really attractive car. And you'll know if you watch our channel that we love the design direction of Mazda in recent years. There's the stylish grille and its glossy surround, LED DRLs, fog lights integrated into the headlights and body colored door handles. A lot of wagons when viewed from the rear tend to look quite practical, to put it nicely. Now this one, I have to say, it looks pretty nice. So in looks, both years are pretty similar, but the newest Mazda 3 has introduced a slightly sharper design that we may see applied to future designs of the 6. Now if you need to see the wheels to realise that this is a lower trim level, but the engine bay should be far more revealing. This is a naturally aspirated 2.5 litre Sky Active G engine with 140 kilowatts of power and 252 newton metres of torque. It has cylinder deactivation and officially consumes 7 litres per 100 kilometres and is paired with a 6-speed automatic gearbox. This engine's available in both the Sport and Touring trims. While the two top trims get a 2.5 litre turbo, which has 170 kilowatts of power and 420 newton metres of torque. So what's it like to drive with a lesser engine? Okay, the torque figures of this engine and the turbo one are quite different, but the power difference is just 30 kilowatts. Definitely noticeable, but not really spectacular. So could this mean that there's not a huge difference between the two engines? Well, the Mazda 6 wagon weighs 1.5 tonnes, so the engine has some work to do. But the increased compression and advanced ignition timing make its reactions feel instant enough. The natural aspiration means that the power buildup is really even and controlled. So, you're driving steadily at 1600 revs and you want to overtake. You press the pedal and you instantly feel the reaction, but it's not quite the reaction that you were hoping for. You see, the power and torque ratings are good enough, but they are the top measured figures, found at 6,000 and 4,000 revs respectively. So unless you're in a low gear revving quite high, you don't really get to use all that power. When you really push the pedal hard, you do get some go, but you can't really expect to drive at 5,000 revs generally. So with this engine, the Mazda 6 is definitely a cruiser and not even close to the higher trim levels with the turbos. The 2018 GT trim that Simone reviewed had the 2.5 litre turbo and that one has 170 kilowatts from 5,000 revs but 420 newton metres of torque from just 2,000 revs which made a huge difference. The difference in these two engines is definitely significant so you've got to keep that in mind if you're someone who likes oomph. We expect to see the Skyactiv X in the Mazda 6 soon as well so if that lives up to the hype, I feel that the naturally aspirated unit may be on its way out. Now it's a great unit and it has had a really good run. So aside from the engine, the noise levels were also significantly reduced in the 2018 model. So it's really nice to experience that in this one now. If the engine is not really sporty, well, everything else is. The driving position is great. It's really comfortable. And also the braking is really smooth and intuitive. I, I really like it. Visibility from the front and sides is really great. However, the back window is really low and really narrow. So the three headrests at the back really do compromise the visibility at the back. So that's something to take note of. Steering is precise and direct, and all that is combined with the G-Vectoring Control Plus, 
which is now standard across the range. It is an enhanced version of the existing G vectoring control, and it adds your movement control for better stability and composure when cornering. It's such a nice car to drive. Mazda say that they want the driver to feel like they're one with the car, and I really feel that. It's such a well-measured and intuitive drive. On the inside, the Mazda 6 still feels quite premium. Obviously, higher trim levels are much plusher, but even this trim is one of the best in its class and price range. Mazda's new horizontal theme works really well here with the ultra-minimal design and also the really clean and high-quality materials. Standard features include active driving display, radar cruise control, satellite navigation, and for 2019, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, why am I so excited about something that you see pretty commonly nowadays? Well, it was just last month that I reviewed the CX-3 and you had to pay extra to get Apple CarPlay in that. This trim adds leather seats and this really nice premium Bose sound system. And I love great sound in a car. So tick. Everything's softer touch. Even in the back, you get this nice soft touch trim in the seats and leather seat backs, all feeling really nice and high quality. Now back here, there is plenty of leg room and the seats are really comfortable and they give great support for the legs. <sighs> Fold down the armrests and you see cup holders, this small storage space and two USB charging points. Now I have to say, I really love this little compartment. I think it's excellent for the two back passengers. But we do have to point out that the third seat in the middle is not really functional. It's got the transmission tunnel that's really high and it's super narrow. So this car is more ideally suited to two back passengers. There is plenty of storage space, including large door bins, a pretty hefty central control bin and a surprisingly smaller glove box. There is one thing to warn you about the interior if you're on the tall side. The sleek design does reduce headroom even in the front. It's one of the lowest designs I've seen. So if you are tall, you're gonna to wanna to check that out before you commit. You get 506 liters of cargo space, which is good enough for this class. The opening is also nice and wide. Standard safety features include things like lane keep assist, radar cruise control, advanced keyless entry and push button start, blind spot monitoring, two isofix points and three top tether points. Driving attention alert, electric parking brake with auto hold, forward obstruction warning, G vectoring plus, intelligent speed assistance, lane departure warning, front and rear parking sensors and reversing camera, smart brake support and smart city brake support, traffic sign recognition and tyre pressure monitoring. And this is the second lowest trim. So bearing in mind that this is not even considered a minor facelift as we got a whole new model last year, let's wrap up what the new additions were for the 2019 Mazda 6. The additions include the mentioned G Vectoring Plus, tyre pressure monitoring as standard, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an improved FM radio sound due to an additional antenna that improves reception. 2019 prices for the Mazda 6 wagon start at $35,790 for the Sport and work their way up to just over $51K for the top at Tenza with that turbo engine. Higher trim levels get more of course, but remembering that this is not even a facelift, it's actually pretty impressive. The 2018 model was already an excellent car, even before these minor additions. And in my opinion, this addition comes through even stronger. This latest 2019 Mazda 6 is a great tweak on an already excellent car and definitely remains one of the best in its class. And thanks again for watching Cartel TV. And to help us out, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Peace.